Okay, now that we've looked at how we manufacture drugs and then how we get them into the body, the next thing that we really got to look at is determining an effective and safe dose. And the main thing associated with this is remembering that pretty much anything can be toxic to our body if we have it in extreme amounts. So this includes vitamins um, or things like that, as well as um, this graphic here shows us um, that even things like water or coffee have lethal doses. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to die if you drink the normal amount, amount of coffee or anything like this. Okay, so what you're looking at here is 118 coffees in pretty much a short period of time. Okay, so this is estimated if you took it all at once um, for someone who was about 75 kilograms. And you can imagine that taking 118 coffees all at once is going to be pretty much impossible. Um, 13 shots of alcohol, however, um, alcohol poisoning can happen um, and does occur with um, drinking too much in a short period of time. Um, I don't think we're going to be drinking six litres of water at one time though so um yes but this is to give you an idea that um anything can have a lethal dose if we ingest too much of it depending on what it is so in order to figure out how much is going to be an effective uh, dose for a patient to take um, a lot of work is done so too little and we're not going to get the desired therapeutic effect that being the beneficial effect that we see um, too much and it can be toxic or even fatal and certainly increase the amount of um, side effects that we see so the effective dose uh, effective dosage is given the terminology ED50 and this is the amount of the product that produces a therapeutic response in 50% of the population. You have to remember that everybody uh, reacts differently to pharmaceuticals. Our metabolisms are all different. There's different things going on in our bodies. So we're, what we're looking at is generally a distribution, much like a distribution of grades, and we're looking at the effective dose in 50% of the population. Okay, so below this dosage, it's not going to be effective for most people. Okay, the lethal dose in 50% of the population we determine through animal models and we do not do in humans. Okay, so the lethal dose in 50% of the population is that which is lethal. If we were to give it to 5,000, then we would expect 2,500 to die. Okay, so you can understand why this is not done in humans. Okay, so then if we take the ratio of these, so we take the LD50 and, um, and the ED50 and we find the um, ratio of these, either usually the toxic dose or the lethal dose, and then we put the effective dose on the bottom, okay, it gives us a value called the therapeutic index. So the larger the therapeutic index, the safer the drug, okay. So we can also look at this um, in a curve. So if this is the percentage of patients responding to a drug on our y-axis, then we can plot this so we get a log curve. And what we can do is we can see, we can take this to 50% here and 50% here. This range of doses in here <clears throat> is our therapeutic index. So within that range, a doctor can prescribe a different dosage and expect it to be effective and not toxic to their patient. Generally, they will keep the therapeutic window in this main block here where we're not hitting the toxic level. So this means that if a patient isn't responding to a particular dosage, the doctor has the opportunity to up it a little bit, or perhaps if the side effects are too strong or it's giving um, some toxic effects to the patient, they can drop it back a bit and still be within the effective uh, therapeutic window. So again, this is just looking at it, remembering that in humans, we look at the toxic effect so we're looking at this range where it's toxic not lethal okay um and then this what uh, x-axis is actually the concentration relative to the concentration in the blood plasma okay so 
if we look back here, looking at it in a different way, now we're looking at the plasma concentration on the y-axis and the time that the drug spends in the window, uh, the body, we can see that if we can have a drug that is acting for a longer period of time, then within that therapeutic window, then we're going to have a better chance of success. Okay, so for a drug to be effective, it has to um, be at its therapeutic concentration in the blood. It's no good if we deliver the therapeutic concentration and then that drug is rapidly metabolized and then doesn't actually do what it's meant to do. Okay, um, the other thing is that we need to administer and monitor that administ administration um, so that we know what the concentrations are going to be and make sure that our drug isn't delivered in the toxic region initially before it starts to break down. Importantly, you need to be able to describe what the therapeutic window is and also be able to define the therapeutic index in both humans and animals. So the therapeutic index in animals is given by the TD50 divided by the ED50. Remembering that the larger the number, the safer the drug. And in animals, we have the LD50 divided by the ED50. Okay, so... You can imagine that there are a number of things that affect the therapeutic window. These can be the type of drugs, the age, gender, uh, well, sex and weight of the patient, their diet, the environment. Because drugs are so susceptible to the way that our bodies behave, the therapeutic window is very, very susceptible to these as well. So if we have a wide therapeutic window, so we have like a low effective dose and a large lethal dose, then we have a big difference between them. And these are ones that we generally see as being quite common in over-the-counter medications. These are ones where um, it's safe for the patient to be able to deliver them themselves without being monitored. On the other hand, if you have a very small therapeutic window where you have a small difference between these two, say the effective dose is up here and your toxic dose is here, you have a small therapeutic window, what you end up with is something that can be quite risky to administer. Okay, the lethal dose in this case, or the toxic dose in this case, is going to be quite close to the effective dose. So this is used for very um, severe conditions or drugs that require monitoring because you're looking at a high risk of overdose. So um, heroin, when it's used um, medicinally, which does happen in very rare occasions, and even morphine, um, some chemotherapeutic agents and things like these, they must be administered with close monitoring to ensure patient safety while they take them. Okay, let's leave it there and we'll talk about tolerance and side effects in the next video.